right time, right strategy. In car. <laughs> All right. So, Randy, I want to say something. <laughs> You're the, this is the first time that I've met you or seen you, and I've you've been here for two days, and I want to say that you are definitely my main Zuckerberg. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that is awesome. I love that so much. I, uh, yeah, I think, mean, you know, the other guy's pretty awesome, but we're not going to you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, but yeah, so maybe if we could just go down the line and just um, tell a little bit about what's on your mind and what you're working on now. So uh, my name is Ram. I'm uh, the founder of Crypto Banter. I joined this industry in 2016, 2017. I came from a marketing background. Um, before this, I built and sold the biggest marketing company on the African continent. And I think it was all luck or fate or whatever that I found myself as probably one of the only marketers in an industry that was filled with tech people. And for people who've met tech people, you'll kind of know that they don't know anything and don't really care about marketing. They think that their product will just market itself. And so I found that I had a little bit of an advantage because I was speaking to these people and looking at them and going like, that's great, but no one's ever going to understand what you said. And I think that's where I found my superpower. And uh, fast forward a couple of years later, we're Crypto Banter. We've got a, a YouTube channel. We're building a media business. And uh, we're very much a mission-led organization. Anyone that's ever worked with us will tell you that we don't really care about views or subscribers or money. We just care about changing people's lives. And we can talk about that a bit later today. I love it. I can, I can relate a lot because uh, I remember an engineer in the early days when I said that I was a marketer. It was like, marketers are like catfish. You suck the scum off the bottom of the tank. And I was like, cool. I, I felt really welcome here. In the, beginning, <laughs> in the beginning, when tech people are developing products, they're so arrogant about what they're building that they diss the marketing person. But fast forward to where we are today in this industry, and now every tech person is like, please, please can we just sit with you for an hour? Please, please can you just join us? Please, will you consult us? Because they realize that actually building the best tech product is nothing. Yeah. And specifically, when you think about crypto, you've got 100,000 coins launching a month, and you've got a finite uh, attention span. Right. And actually, the only, how, do you, how do you stick out when there's 100,000 coins is you need to know how to channel, how to get marketing, how to get influence, how to get attention. And that's really where, where we're, I think we're pretty wow. strong. Absolutely. All right. T tell well, us about your journey. Firstly, it's good to be in a room with so many content creators who share our passion <laughs> for crypto, uh, especially on this day when Bitcoin broke all-time highs. <laughs> Hopefully 80k by the end of this call. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so my name is Nick. Um, so um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of the Coin Bureau. Um, and my background, um, so non slightly non-traditional for crypto content creators, I used to work in TradFi uh, within the four walls of an investment bank at Goldman Sachs, and it was within that environment that I realized that crypto, the traditional financial system was not fit for purpose, and then I went to something new and exciting, I went to a new exciting industry, and I came across uh, Bitcoin when I was looking to buy a domain online, ah. <laughs> and you could pay, pay with Bitcoin, I was like, it's now being used in traditional, co in actual commerce. Did you and own Bitcoin before that? I didn't, unfortunately, ah. although, so yeah, and this is about 2016 time, so bought my first Bitcoin, started trading it, and learn about cryptocurrency, invest in Ethereum, and then decided I want to teach more people about it. cryptocurrency in general, crypto education, where you can't really understand a discipline unless you can succinctly break it down for other people in an easy to digest form. So we started the Coin Bureau's website in 2017 initially, and um, uh, then uh, you know grew it out, and then we eventually started the YouTube channel in 2019, and the rest is history, they say. And our goal at Coin Bureau is to help with facilitate the mass adoption of cryptocurrency by educating one person at a time. Oh. It doesn't matter if it's your mom at the dinner table or your cousin at the um, you know at family gathering or millions of subscribers. It all starts with one person. Fantastic. Um, yes, we love that. Um, all right, Alex, what are you? Hey, hey. Um, my name is Alex. So uh, I came to the crypto industry in 2019, but before that, in 2014, I started a company called Tulegram. So it became uh, the biggest social media service, software as a service in the world with the two million, more than 2 million users all over the world. So we help small companies and small businesses to promote their Instagram and Facebook page all over the internet. So 
And uh, in 2019, like after the five years of building the company, I sold the company. And uh, so I was looking around trying to understand, so what, what's going to be next? What kind of niche I, I need to like take next for the next five or, five, uh, five or ten years? So I was looking around, and at that moment, in 2019, I already knew about the Bitcoin because first time I like I bought my first Bitcoin in 2016 with a price like seven or eight hundred. But then I sold it with a eleven hundred dollars, so it just made like forty percent profit. <laughs> but then, so I was looking around, and I saw, and, and I knew already like a couple guys who was in crypto, and I didn't, I couldn't really understand what they're doing and so what they're working on. But I saw that like. In they in a couple months they make more money than I like build in four or five years of my company until I ground. So that was pretty interesting. And I understood that so it, it's kind of wild west here. And so a lot of things happening, a lot of things coming, a lot of products building. So a lot of talented people come to the industry. And I actually I, I wasn't thinking that so I'm gonna be one of these people there, but I was interested about it. And so I decided to like uh, study communicating with the people from the crypto industry and there was actually, in my opinion, there was in the very beginning of 2019, but so Bitcoin, I don't remember, it was like $20,000 already, but so that was really beginning. And then we started trying to making something here and before that I actually made a YouTube in Russia and I'm actually the host of the biggest podcast on CIS with the five or six million views every month and like we just started doing everything we, we could find here in crypto. And now, uh, what, what we got? Actually, I'm founder of X Empire. I don't know, maybe some, some of you heard about it. So uh, we, we trade on most of the major exchange with the ticker X. Uh, I'm, uh, I have uh, my personal YouTube channel uh, talking about crypto, like making videos about all this stuff. We also have our X Empire channel with more than 6 million subscribers and talking about crypto and all this thing. So, and we also run in a company called Xionics. This is the software for the high frequency trading in crypto. So we make, make a lot of stuff and this is pretty fun. I love this industry. It's still wild west. Uh, it's like they're trying to regulate this. It's still like, it's still interesting. Uh, super excited. I still think that we are at the very beginning and I think that just a small group of people here and this is the true believers in crypto and I, I, I don't know what, what kind of things I can share with you but so I'll do my best to talk everything awesome. I can do about it. Love it, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Love, love those shoes, they're, they're calling me from here. Yeah, thank you. What was the question again? Sorry. Just yeah, <laughs> introduce yourself and then talk a little bit about about the journey that, that got you uh, on stage today. Okay. Um, yeah. So I um, before crypto, I was uh, just working in supermarkets. I was researching um, the banking system before I knew about Bitcoin, um, and I was accumulating physical gold and silver because I thought that was the antidote to the banking system, which it still kind of is, but then when I heard about Bitcoin, I realized that that is, of course, uh, a much better um, alternative. And um, I started my YouTube channel because I wanted to um, learn more, and I thought the best way to learn is to educate because then I push myself to learn because you need to know what you teach. So I um, started my YouTube channel and um, uh, went to... Uh, I quit my job a little bit later because I started making uh, money with my YouTube channel, so that was cool. Um, and then I went to a conference uh, and had some fun because I was like, what do, what do I do now with my new income and uh, like I need to do something. So I went to a conference and then actually Chris uh, messaged me after he saw that I went to that conference and he was like, hey bro, um, I'm going to go to this other conference, they pay uh, like flights and hotels, they should come as well. And I was like, what? They're going to pay our flights and hotels? Like, that was like an insane thing to me. And he was like, yeah, 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 I'll hook you up. And then we joined together to this uh, blockchain cruise. Um, and from there on, we went to like dozens and dozens of uh, conferences all around the world and uh, met cool content creators and uh, cool people. And um, yeah, I think that was like the, the beginning of like both of our... Um, content creator journeys, you know, and then uh, seeing the world and eventually that got us to Dubai, which is like the best place in the world for people like us. Um, so, yeah. Do you have a, like a specific pinch me moment or a specific memory from those early days that you're like, I can't believe this is my life? I think, well, I remember the first pinch me moment was probably when I went to the first conference and I checked into this uh, four star hotel. Um, with my own money, and I had flown there with my own money, 
uh, and I went out on the balcony and it was like February so in Sweden where I came from it was like like <laughs> negative <Dark>. five <laughs> degrees and I go out on this balcony in Mexico and I'm like wow I'm here with my own money like with my own success like I came here with just I created this for myself that was a huge moment for me actually wow. um, and then there's been many moments after that, like just uh, traveling around with Chris, going to cool hotels and cool places I never saw before, and just like creating that freedom was insane. I want to jump in and tell a story, if you don't mind. Um, I met Chris and Carl at a conference, I think it was in Korea. I was at CNBC and I launched the world's first crypto show. And these two were YouTube streamers and they came to me and they said, bro, you should be doing affiliate links. And I was like, CNBC would never let me do affiliate links. Bro, you should be doing affiliate links. And I thought to myself at the time, I'm going to make so much more money from advertising on the CNBC show than these affiliate links that they speak about. If only I'd listened to them. <laughs> <laughs> if only I'd listened to them back then. Thank this you. guy's doing very well. Don't get confused. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone here is doing very well, or you wouldn't be on the stage. But we we, we love an acknowledgement of, uh, of of knowing uh, things before everyone else. So Chris, what about you? What's your story? Yeah, as Carl already said, our history is kind of the same as we met pretty early in the in our career, <laughs> and um, we shared a lot of the same experiences. Before that, however, all the way until the beginning of 2017, when I discovered Bitcoin, I was a taxi driver. I was also studying economics. If I go back a little bit more back in time, I was thrown out of school and um, I had a little bit ADHD. I don't really like to um, concentrate so much on things I'm not very really interested in. A lot, yeah, but not, maybe, not much more than you maybe, but... Same level. <laughs> yeah, I got kicked out, uh, I found a new school, I kind of still got my, uh, my degree in the end, I started different universities, I, I dropped out, start, started again a law university degree, I dropped out and then I found economics and I loved economics. First time in my life I actually was able to concentrate on something, to, to be good at something, I went to South Africa, I was the best of my class and <laughs> was just amazing and then I went back to Germany, drove taxi on the weekend and Similar to him, I thought gold and silver is the solution, which kind of it is, but once I found Bitcoin, I understood, wow, that is also the solution, but it's way superior to gold, still in my opinion. And when I understood that, and I also analyzed a little bit how can I position myself in that space, what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, I like to talk, I like to influence people, I'm good in convincing people, um, I thought, well, maybe you start a YouTube channel and talk about Bitcoin, right? <laughs> Um, because of my university before, and my professor was actually an ex-central banker, he was teaching us how bad Keynesian economics is, that the system we are in right now, it's actually destined to fail. Fiat currencies are not going to survive. And um, when I understood all of that, and I found Bitcoin, and I knew Bitcoin is the solution to that, especially already to people who are living in Zimbabwe, Venezuela, Turkey, or like all of these high inflationary countries, I thought I can not only make a living for myself, creating content, investing, trading, I can also actually help the world to get a better place by educating people about the beauty of Bitcoin and that Bitcoin can be their safe haven um, from, um, from this big downward spiral the central banks are creating. So um, that was my mission, my purpose, and I said it back then, and until today, it keeps me going. And uh, I really love what I'm doing. Now I'm here, I have my channel, and on Crypto, uh, 1.5 million on Twitter, then 600,000 on YouTube, and like some other platforms. And um, yeah, I believe uh, I'm doing a good job in educating people about Bitcoin. I basically, almost 100% of my content is about Bitcoin. Um, maybe in the next few months, it's going to change a little bit, but overall, and the same question to you, what, what's been like a, a pinch me moment for you going from kind of driving taxi to where you are today? What, what was the moment that you were like, wow? I think it started before I made money in crypto when already crypto was itself taking off. When I put like the few thousand dollars I saved from taxi driving in Bitcoin, ICOs and so on. And when that went higher and higher and higher and I suddenly made more sometimes in portfolio gains within one hour than I made in a whole weekend of taxi driving. I was like, whoa, maybe that's, uh, there's some serious uh, potential to that. And then the next pinch me moment was when I made my first money with YouTube also. And there are many content creators here, and um, many of you maybe 
especially during the last two years, were sometimes discouraged. There was not much growth in, 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 in your content, in your views. I, 12 months, didn't make any money at all. So I just keep on going, keep improving, and um, eventually it will take off for you for sure. So I know, I mean, being in crypto is a thrilling ride. It's also a roller coaster. You know, we're having a great week this week. Uh, the next week, uh, everyone might be crushing on crypto. What, what is exciting to each of you about creating and educating this space, and what keeps you up at night, wondering if you'll still have a, uh, have a role? So. so I want to say two things. One is um, I don't think that you can live your life dependent on the market. Yeah. So the way we run our business and the way that I run my own personal um, discipline is just show up every day, bull market, bear market, make the same show every day, put in the same effort every single day. I think there's probably 10 people in the crowd that actually work in our business and they know that our superpower is that we are resilient to any type of market condition and that we march 15 miles every single day regardless of what the weather outside is. And I think that that's, that's the, the first superpower. Uh, the second superpower that I think we have as an organization is I made money before crypto. So unlike a lot of people here, my first exit, which was a big exit, was actually outside of crypto selling the marketing company. And so my next venture was something that had to change the world. And I got motivation from people like your brother and people who were making mass impact on a global scale. And I wanted to make mass impact on a global scale. And I didn't know how to do that. And so I went on an exponential journey. I went to Harvard. I went to Singularity. I, went to, I just went on an exponential journey. And what I realized was that if you do a lot in an industry with asymmetric information or with, in a new industry, information is asymmetry gives you an advantage. And if you're willing to study every single day and spend money on researchers every single day, and then you're willing to act on, because you have to act on what you've learned. So if you're willing to learn every day with a bunch of researchers, then you're willing to change the, the pieces on your own personal chess investment board in a transparent way, and then communicate that to your audience in a transparent way, for good and for bad. So, hey, I made this move, I studied all day, and I landed up losing money. I made this move and I studied all day and I ended up making money. Net net, because of the information asymmetry in this industry, you will land up making money. It's inevitable. The, if you're willing to invest, you will land up making money. Um, and so what I realized was that our superpower was just putting a camera on every day because that forced us to be credible. Doing the research, so if you know that at four o'clock every day there's a camera going on your face, You'll study every day until 4, you'll make the changes to your portfolio at 5 to 4, and then you'll tell your community what you've done, for good and for bad. Yeah. And the superpower is just being transparent and willing to be able to do the work and willing to be consistent. And there's no other shortcut. Like, every, everyone else says, oh, how can I grow my following to 100,000? No. Go, go back, do the work, march 15 miles a day through the snow, through the rain, through the sun, go to work, I don't, want to, I don't want to take up too much time, but I want to just quickly share a story with the audience, and then everyone else can have the mic. But I had a very bad day in 2021. I think everybody here knows about that day. It was the day Luna went down. Over 55% of my portfolio was in Luna. And I lost over $100 million that day of my own personal cash, and I lost all my motivation, all my confidence, and everything else. And my entire community was in Luna, and they all hated my guts. What did I do? I showed up at four o'clock every single day and I made a video and I told the truth. And I told them about how I felt and I mourned with them and we mourned the loss of Luna together. And then one day when all the emotions were out from all of us, me and the community, we as a community made a decision that we had two options. Either we're gonna give up or we're gonna turn around and fight and build our portfolios to be higher than they were before Luna collapsed. And again, it was that transparency, it was that vulnerability, it was that humility, it was sharing, not as, hey guys, I'm here to do a show, but saying, guys, I lost everything. And now I've got choices to make in my life, and I'm choosing this choice with you. And that is what built it. So there's no shortcuts. Just be humble, transparent, human, and be ready to put in the work and be consistent. And that's the only formula for me to, to succeed. It's a really important and beautiful story. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. 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 Thank you.
tell them who the brand is 100 percent I think that if you're in this space as a content creator, unless you are believe to your core that true cryptocurrency is a transformative force for the future, you won't make it. Yeah. Because markets come and go, right? You bull cycles, bear cycles. And in the depth of a bear market, right, you have to then sit in there and producing content every single time. It's difficult. Especially if your wealth is tied up within cryptocurrency. Because all of us here invest in cryptocurrency. Now we're creating content for people, we're educating people. And if the markets are down, your net worth has collapsed. Now you also have to get out there and talk to people and be optimistic about it, right? Especially when prices are crashing. And I know this too well because I'm um, coming back to challenges and things that keep us up at night. I mean, I'm sure everyone here is worried about the algorithms, right? Especially on a particular platform of choice. And um, as I said in the beginning, we were started as a website that did educational research reports on all these different kind of altcoins. And around 2019 time, the depth of the previous bear market, we're going to like 3,000 Bitcoin. <laughs> and you're watching this happen at that time, YouTube, uh, Google released an algorithm update. And our website was doing pretty well in terms of traffic. Google recent algorithm update, and it crashed all crypto sites. Like big crypto sites crashed, wow. ours crashed, 70% fall off in traffic. Right, wow. so then you realize, okay, now I'm dealing with the bear market, I'm dealing with prices collapsing, uh, I gotta keep doing content. Have no more traffic. And no more traffic. <laughs> so what am I gonna do, right? So we thought, okay, well, why don't we try and diversify with different platform, different format? Maybe let's try and put some videos on YouTube, see how it does, right? And the time Guy was with us as well, he was a writer and he, you know, pulled the short straw, the British accents and all that. And we thought, okay, let's just shoot some videos like the webcam in our living room and produce content for YouTube. And we put it up there and the rest of the day is history. So, well, I look back on that time and it was, okay, at the time, a very scary situation for crypto content creators and for crypto creating content in general. Uh, it was a transformative moment for us, right, and led to the creation of something new. So, and, that, and this also informed us the importance of not relying too much on any one platform. Yeah. And using humans more. make humans make the most impressive decision, decisions at the po at the point of the deepest desperation. Hundred percent. It's when you have to do something to survive. And there's no plan. That is when that is when you do it. So if you think about an entrepreneur hockey stick curve, which goes down, 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 and then turns. <laughs> The turning point is the point of max desperation. You're out of money and you're out of ideas and you've got to make something work. And that's when you turn. That's, yeah. that's like, so your story of like, you had to do something. I did something. I told myself when I left TradFi, I will never, ever, ever go back to work in an investment bank because like also at that stage I questioned, you know, okay, now you work within crypto, have you made the right choice? Could the market's collapsing? Should you go back with your tail between your legs to TradFi? I was like, never happening. I believe in crypto. I'm going to make it work no matter what happens. And here we are today. So, uh, just to piggyback on that a little, are you still to this day kind of like eyeing other platforms? Yeah, exactly. and, and what? How are you diversifying? Uh, diversifying. I think it's important to keep uh, on top of what sort of platforms are trending and try to get obviously the new platforms that come out. Get yeah. it. Get there early because when you get there early, obviously you get most traction. Like obviously now. Can I ask a question? Because I think I think maybe relevant to everyone here. Like we're all mainly YouTube creators. And I think we all know that, I think most of our views and most of our conversions here happen on YouTube. Is there anyone here that doesn't agree with that? Maybe just as a show of hands, who here gets most of their views and most of their conver conversions on a platform other than YouTube? Okay, so this is my, I want to be very vulnerable and honest with you guys. I wake up every single morning and the first thing I do is I look to see that my channel is still on YouTube. How many, of you, how many of you feel the same way? How many of you, we all have a, we all have a threat to our, we all have a threat to our business that YouTube will shut down our channels for no reason whatsoever. Do we agree? Yeah. So maybe I want to talk to you guys because all of our income is reliant on that. What are you guys doing to hedge yourself against the YouTube risk? Because I'm really interested to know. Okay, maybe first I can moderate the panel and then you can I'm interested. I'm interested to know what he's doing. Me? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, it's obviously like, well, in terms of our platform, our education, we've now obviously started a pay world service as well, self-hosted videos, um, because uh, when people actually pay to get access to these old coin reviews, it's called the Coin Bureau Club, and that's a good place. We control the videos, we host the videos, it's not relying necessarily on YouTube, we've got a very strong community there, and we built up this hardcore following and people who value our education and value our content. It doesn't matter, they don't need to get it on YouTube, they're not watching YouTube just because of us. They want our content and our guides and our education and our old coin reviews, so we can give it to them and a paywall service by Vimeo, they don't mind, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Very cool. Any other questions you want to throw in? No, no, I was just, uh, 
I mean, these are these are questions that in our industry like of give course. us anxiety. You know, no, I, mean, I don't know. Course. Okay, no. We can talk about that a little yeah. bit also, but before that, I want to highlight one more thing. So um, I came to the crypto from the traditional sector, and so I, I remember the first thing I was like thinking about. So this crypto is kind of gamble. So and the financial markets, so uh, they're unpredictable. And so one day you're going to be rich, but then the next day you're going to lose everything. So. And then, like, I was thinking about that a lot, and I, I was trying to understand how, how, how I can manage this, and what, what should I do, because when you work in crypto, so for sure, you're gonna, like, get in touch with all of these things, and bull market, bear market, as you told before, yeah? And so what I realized, so that actually, that's pretty same with any other markets. But uh, when we work, like, in a, I don't know, in a bank or any other job, we think that it's, like, 100% sustainable, and so I'm not gonna, like, nothing gonna be happening there. But you could be fired one day, or, in, for, for example, in my case, uh, as I work uh, with social media before and we made a software, so one of the platforms we were, were working with is Facebook. And so I remember the day when they decided to close the, their API for the software is working with them. And so we like had to shut down like 40% of our software. And so that was 100% unpredictable. And we are, as an entrepreneur, had to, had to manage this and had to find other options to run in our business. And so it's pretty similar with the, with, the, with the crypto. But when you're in crypto market, you know that something's gonna happen like in upcoming days and you're ready for this. And the most part of other markets, so you're not ready for this. And then something happens with you and you're just at that moment, you're trying to, understand, trying to find out what, what should I do. In crypto, you always wake up in the morning and so do like this. Oh, that's all right today. Yeah. and. It, it, for, for me, it, it helps a lot to understand that you're in an unpredictable market and you cannot predict what's going to be tomorrow, but you can control your risks in, in your investments in social media as well. You can diversify your business and all these things. And for me, it, it, it actually inspires a lot because you understand that it's pretty similar in every business. It doesn't matter, are you going to open a restaurant or are you going to go, I don't know, build a bank or any other things. But in crypto, it's still, as I told before, it's very beginning, a lot of opportunities. And so your risk reward is much more bigger than any other industry. It doesn't matter what you're going to do. Are you going to run a YouTube channel or invest in Bitcoin or do any, any other things? And so it's pretty excited. And for me, that's like one of the biggest motivations because I understand it's going to like finish one day. And so a lot of regulators are going to come to the industry. And it's so it's not going to shut down for sure. But it, it's going to change it as any other industry has changed with, 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 the, with the years. So, but at this moment, when, when I see that a lot of things happen and a lot of opportunities come to, come to myself every day, I just want to do everything I see and, like, I don't know, build a business, earn money, and enjoy the life. What do you think that you can do or any of the content creators can do to kind of um, bulletproof your business as a creator before uh, all the regulators come into space or, or, or nothing or just keep your eyes open? Actually, so I actually I think we, we cannot do anything with this. So for sure, we, we can diversify with the, with the different platforms. Uh, uh, and for me as well, we have channels on I have channels on Russian and English, Twitter, Telegram, and all these things. But just let's have a look. Let's say tomorrow regulator gonna close all of this information about crypto the internet. So let's say so we we cannot control this. And what what I what I understand so now that works. And now I need to focus my attention not on a possible problem with a zero percentage, but I need to focus my attention on the possibilities that I have and like spend like all of my life and all of my time to get the results from them. And so actually th this, for me, this is much more important than, than to try to understand what are you gonna do if, if you do close or uh, something like this. Can I just say, I think that I've been in many industries, I think I'm a little bit, a little bit older than some of the guys here. I think I've been in many industries I watched, uh, com I watched the internet, I watched mobile phones, I watched social media, uh, I'm watching AI and I'm watching crypto. And I think the one thing that we should all be very grateful for is that, and maybe for those of you that haven't worked before in other industries is, I've never seen anything like this and I don't think we will ever get an opportunity like this ever again. So this is probably the best opportunity you have to put everything aside and maximize every single second that you have in this opportunity because I've seen a lot of opportunities. I've never seen anything like the opportunity that we live in today. So it's like, this is the one. Absolutely. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on, uh, on, on how you 
you thrive and survive in this risky world that we're in? Um, so I think um, it's very good to enjoy the ups and, uh, and learn from the downs, but I think the most important thing is to really to learn from the mistakes and the downs, because I remember the, the last bull market, um, <laughs> When, uh, when the, because that was the first bull market where I went into a bull market with a lot of money. Uh, the first bull market in 2017, I only had my grocery store money. Like it wasn't really, it wasn't mind blowing. But uh, but when I made so much money in a short period of time, I think I just got a little bit of hubris, and I thought I am the smartest guy in the world, the best investor ever. But actually, even a monkey could have made the money I made. Kind of like just just buying random altcoins, you, you make money in the bull market. So I learned the hard way that, you know, money comes and money goes unless you um, unless you do certain things and take some profits. And, you know, I think all of us fucked up the last uh, bull market. We could have taken more profits. Like, you know, uh, I think we were waiting for 100K and it didn't happen. And then other mistakes, like I got scammed a bit, uh, you know. So I think the most important thing is that learning from mistakes makes us um, smarter and mature. And uh, I think all of us that go through at least one cycle, the full, like, up and the full down, the whole, you know, the bullish cycle and the bearish market, we can actually make a lot of money in the, in the next cycle. That's what I believe now, because I feel like I have um, certain, you know, knowledge now that I didn't have in the previous cycle that will help me. And of course, I will share as much as I can on my channel what I learned, all of my mistakes, so that people can learn from it. Because uh, one thing is to learn from your own pain, and that is very good. You should learn from your own pain, but someone out there could learn from someone else's pain, so they don't actually have to go through the pain. Um, certain things I think you need to learn the hard way, but certain mistakes you could actually listen to someone who went through the pain and uh, avoid it before it happens. So, uh, Carl, do you really think that a newbie is going to learn from, uh, from you telling them, teaching them? Like, I, I kind of feel like you've got to feel that pain of having and losing. Certainly. That you'll, never, that you'll never do it again. Well, okay, so one simple thing is like, don't give Bitcoin to someone who will like promise returns on your Bitcoin. Like, that, that one is like, I don't think anyone should have to experience that pain. I did that, you know, and um, you know, there will be these uh, opportunities in this bull market where you, you lend out your Bitcoin, you get a dividend, like 2% per month or some ludicrous amount, you know, and um, I got caught into that. Um, I thought, you know, yield farming this, but they make up those stories. And I think that people can learn from mine and many other mis others' mistakes out there. Like, just keep your crypto in your own wallet. Um, you can keep a little bit in buy, a bit in Binance if you trust them. I trust them, uh, but I don't put all my net worth in one exchange. I put in hardware wallets and then a few exchanges that I trust. Uh, and don't uh, give your crypto away to people. Um, like, don't fall into the greed, basically. It's very hard to do because in the moment we're human, but um, yeah, just uh, try to learn from our mistakes. I think all of us, we lost money in the previous bull market. Like, I know your store with NFTs. I have my story with like you know yield farming something and Luna. Some things will happen inevitably, like it's um, part of the bear market. But um, take you. profits before before you lose everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Chris, I, I love your thoughts, and then we're gonna open open up to questions. Sure. I mean, what you just said reminds me on a on a saying, which is stupid people don't learn from any mistakes at all. Smart people learn from their own mistakes. But the smartest people learn from mistakes. <coughs> so uh, I really hope you listen to what he was just saying. But uh, also, from my perspective, I did ask a lot of other people, and I know some billionaires in the space, what were their biggest mistakes. It was usually connected to fear, connected to greed. They tried to outperform the market, sell the top, buy the bottom, or whatever. And it, it doesn't really work like this. It's, it's not that easy. Otherwise, Warren Buffett would do it, and he would have trillions already, right? No, but he was doing it over the long term. And um, that's why I also was, in the last three years, almost only in Bitcoin. People said it was boring, and I'd only made a 4x from the bear market bottom. But by investing in altcoins, probably in the last three years, you had a lot of stress and probably lost a lot of money also here and there. Um, so that is one very important thing. As a content creator, of course, if you make money, don't 
gamble with a lot of it. Focus on cash flow first. Cash flow is for everyone always first. You should focus on cash flow, maximize your cash flow, and the cash flow you are getting, you can either reinvest in your own business or you can take the disposable income, keep it in Bitcoin or in gold or whatever. I personally, I chose Bitcoin and I will continue to choose Bitcoin. And if you want to venture off into the altcoin space, I would never do that with all of my money. I would never have big positions in one specific thing. There's always a big flashy... Um, big flashy narrative or so which will which will try to get your money try to get your bitcoin and um, you remember probably luna was flashy amazing it was huge everyone thought it was too big to fail and boom what happened so um, make sure you are not losing your hard-earned money focus on cash flow first and then um, yeah go go the safer approach in my opinion going the safe approach bitcoin is still a potential of 100x if bitcoin soaks up um, like most of the monetary energy in the world, it becomes a world reserve currency. That's my best case scenario. We look at five to ten million dollars per Bitcoin potentially. That's a hundred X from today. If you want a hundred X meme coin, leave it aside. Bitcoin is your hundred X meme coin, in my opinion. So um, another thing we talked about was the risk of getting your channel removed. And um, there, I, I don't live in fear. I don't care about that. My channel got deleted a few times, my YouTube channel. I went over to uh, X, I made a lot of noise, my followers made noise for me, I got my channel back. And even if it gets deleted eventually, what they can't take away from you is your brand value and the reputation you've built over the few years. If my channel would be taken away by YouTube and I do not get it back, hopefully this will not happen, but easy, I just open another channel or uh, like, all that attention, all the energy I'm getting on YouTube, if I'm not opening it on YouTube, I will kind of convert it inherently, automatically over to Twitter, and then I will get more followers on Twitter. You will not lose your brand value and um, the name you've built for yourself. So I uh, don't really have to live in fear. What you have to focus on is cash flow, your brand, your reputation. And um, I think that is the most important for, for content creators. Amazing. I was just alerted that Bitcoin did just hit 80,000. <laughs> 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 Manifested it. Yes, uh, I, I, I tweeted it. I tweeted it last week. I said we're sending 80,000 by Monday. That's awesome. All right, we have a few minutes left for questions from the audience, but that's a great way to celebrate. Before Monday. Before Monday. Okay, I saw the live Monday. Oh, yes, over there. Do we have microphones coming? Awesome. Yes, introduce yourself and, and ask away. I'm Jacob from Poland. I'm also content creator from YouTube uh, about crypto, and I have 12 questions, but I maybe uh, only two. Uh, the first one is: What are some retention hacks and tricks you find out works good for you uh, for your audience? And second one: Do you use title video idea checklist? If uh, so, what are the main points? Uh, so, what's the second question again? Uh, do you use a title video idea checklist? Title video idea checklist. Yes. Like when you post a video, so do you have a like list of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. titles? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so first retention. I think retention is coming back to brand name. I think that one, the, especially when you're speaking to lots of fans and me and them, and that the thing they associate Coin Bureau with is the fact that we were the first videos they come by when they're looking for something to learn about cryptocurrency, right? And it's given them that first like hit of crypto in the sense that there's something they know they learn from Coin Bureau and it help, help help them on their crypto journey, right? So that's kind of a fan when they first come to cryptocurrency and they learn something from you. If you teach someone something that they continue hold held in for life, it's incredibly valuable. So they associate you with education. They don't just associate you with like what's the next hot thing to buy right now. It's like they taught me something. I learned about this cryptocurrency from them. I'm coming back to it for that, right? So that retention it ties back to brand value. If you have a very valuable brand, and over the long term, through numerous different cycles, they always want to come back to your reviews and your analysis, right? And even if it isn't, back to what you were saying about the platforms, even if it isn't on YouTube, because they know the kind of advice, the kind of education you give is impartial and you know authentic. They'll always come back to that. So the retention comes back to your reputation as a content creator, your reputation as an educator. So that's what's helped with our retention, right? It's just being true and authentic and also avoiding like pitfalls of like, you know, doing things just for the short term, make a lot of money and then you burn your audience in the process. Because if you burn your audience in a, in a cycle, right, they're not going to be in the next cycle, right? Your channel won't continue growing in the best cycle. And we've learned and we've seen that happen with many others. 
Um, and then in terms of checklists for titles, I mean, titles, SEO is very important. From a YouTube, most YouTube creators will know this. First is the thumbnail, then it's the title. Thumbnails themselves take a lot of time to do that. A-B test, you gotta check them out because the thumbnail is what people associate when they check it out, right? In the suggested videos. So make sure your thumbnail game is first importantly, and then you go into the titles. And then of course it's like knowing about the SEO game. So what kind of what kind of tickers are, are, are like trending right now, what sort of topics are interesting, and you try and build it into your into your titles. And something that I don't see enough creators doing, especially on the YouTube side, is going back and testing newer titles once your video is out. So if it's two weeks old, come back and change it, change the title, change the thumbnail, and then do your analysis on that. So we're very, we're very focused on like data and analysis on the videos that have gone out and what's going out right now and researching what's trending and what's not to incorporate within our thumbnails and titles. I made a couple of things. So uh, I just have an example in my podcast channel because we're working on this thing a lot. And so what we have, we have a special like small team, just two, two people who would like scroll through the channel, like all of the videos for the five years and trying to change all of the titles and previews, like if they if they see just if, if the video not growing like just a little bit, they changing this and change it again and again and again and like sometimes after five or six different previews is gonna grow up really fast. Even if it's like video were uploaded two or three years ago. And it was like pretty nice when we found that this, this thing is really working. So maybe but, you, can, you can try this thing again. But I mean, just the, how important is that in crypto? Like usually the videos that we make in crypto are very specific to a point in time. Like if you're comparing Solana to Sui at a point in time, how important is it that you keep the longevity of the video? Is that that, six, I think six, that six, it depends on the type of content. Yeah, because exactly. sometimes it could be like educational content and it's, uh, yeah, it doesn't be, have the period of time, like short period of we time. We have like, videos that like are two years old. Yeah, yeah, that's well. what I'm talking that's, about. And that's what we're trying to angle to. I think that this is a trade-off, right? To do long form organic content that's useful for you for two years time, right? Then that will take a lot of time to get the right kind of video, to do the right kind of research and title and everything. Because obviously in breaking news kind of stuff, live stream kind of stuff, it's like, it's going to be good for two days or three, or three. It will trend, it will do well for you in those two, three days. But once it's out, you can't, there's no point going back and changing it because the news will change, right? But if you can do something like, you know, what is Bitcoin, right? Like, well, what is blockchain or something like that? That's going to be good for two, three years, you know? Absolutely. All right, I think we have time for one more question. Yeah, I see one down here. <coughs> My question is for Chris. You mentioned that your content is almost 100% Bitcoin trading. Um, my content is similar. And so my question for you is, on the days where the Bitcoin price is just not doing anything and you might already be in a trade and you're just managing it, how do you come up with content ideas on those days when it seems like there's nothing really to talk about? Well, in my opinion, of course, it's more difficult, but there's always something to talk about. So let's say the price is going sideways for ages and you do trading content, then you can change the time frame. If you talked about the four hourly chart before and there was like a W pattern which is pending to break out, then you might as well go to the daily or to the weekly. You can check is there a volume resistance or something, or you check the yearly pattern, even the yearly candles or something. You can just take, change the time frame, or you go over and um, look at on-chain analytics, and uh, you can talk a little bit about on-chain analytics um, instead of technical analysis. Or there's some crazy news about Donald Trump or something, you put Donald Trump in the thumbnail and boom. It's just always something, you have to think about something maybe out of, outside of the box. When you usually do the four hourly and then it goes sideways for some time, yeah, change the time frame or change the kind of content you are talking about. Um, and sometimes I'm even deviating from trading content. And I mean, right now I see that Bitcoin broke the previous all-time high. I was saying for a very long time, once that happens, I will uh, deviate a little bit from the, my heavy allocation to Bitcoin over into altcoins. So now, of course, for me, it will be even easier because I can talk about altcoins as Bitcoin broke the previous all-time high. And I am personally or privately with my portfolio also going into altcoins. So, um, yeah, you can always, of course, also when you think it's ethically correct and when you think it makes sense for your followers, also deviate from the topic of Bitcoin and talk about something else. But to be honest, sometimes you could just skip the day. <laughs> so I, I skipped the day a lot, yeah, yeah. actually, in the last few months. There were sometimes weeks where I just made one video a week. But then there are times where I make like 20 videos a week. Uh, or like with German 40 videos. Sometimes it's pretty good for the community because people also like are not stupid. They understand that nothing happened on the chart. So they, do, they don't want to 
see the like useless videos and sometimes you just skip a couple of days and then just start again and then really enjoy this you like more comments more likes and so it also video goes viral i think um, but also like um, now chris and i think most of us like we don't actually have to make videos anymore but if i was now starting out i would definitely try to make at least one video per day and just like chris said you could easily go out different time frames and if the price is boring i think i mean i know we were traveling all around the world we could easily make three videos per day like it's very easy you can always find even something if the price goes sideways easy to go sideways yeah i think we even did like i know that it's possible because we did we could make 10 videos in a day it is very possible so i think it's all about the mindset if you think you can do it you can do it but i sometimes i hear kwl saying oh it's so tough like nothing is happening i have nothing to talk about well if that's your mindset then you, that's what you will see you will see no opportunities it's like the saying like if you if you look for uh, red cars you will see them but if you if you don't look for them you will not you will just see them pass you will not um, notice them but if you are looking for content if you're looking for opportunities looking for trends you will find them because it's in your mindset to find them so i think as a new kwl well now grind 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 like this bull market you should make three videos per day at least if you want to like really take advantage of the bull market i don't have to anymore chris doesn't have to i know that we we probably or maybe we will because it's like one bull market uh, every four years it's like now the time to grind but uh, for the new kwls just want to go into that in, in terms of also the con concept of regularly posting content, also for the algorithm, and you start to, start to grow your channel, it's important to keep that consistency yeah. going because it feeds the algorithm, right? And it comes back to the point again, and you just like producing content because you're on the grind, right? And you're committing yourself to it. So, yeah, especially starting out, try and get a video out. And, yeah. I just want to say something in wrapping up. Um, when we started our channel, we were very small, and I was grinding, and uh, it was very, very tough. <laughs> Uh, Carl and Chris were instrumental in helping me while when I was a nobody. They were the guys who jumped onto my stream, who brought their communities onto my stream, and they really, really helped us get up. And so I'm making that same offer to you guys. If you guys are young and grinding and starting a channel, and you want any host from Banter to jump onto your stream, just reach out to us. We'll be happily, I will happily repay what they did for me. To you guys. Awesome. We also doing that, guys. By the way, you guys have met Raheem before. Huh? Raheem, put your hand up, mate. He's our COO and BD. We look into collaborate with as many uh, creators as possible. We share our we share our vision about crypto creation, crypto education. Um, does in different languages and geos. We launch lots of different languages in other countries and um, that, um, geo geographies as well. It's important if we can, if you want to work with us, if you want to help, if you want to help from the Coin Bureau and you share our vision of education. We'd like to hear from you as well. Yeah, one more thing just for me. One All right, last this is it. This is it. Thing. Last word. <laughs> um, I never said no to any interview request, um, even if the person has 10 followers, I don't care. So if anyone, I gave already like 15, 20 interviews here at this conference. If anyone felt too shy or so to ask, you can ask me. I'm happy to jump on your channel. Uh, and push some content. That's awesome. And I, I, I think one thing we've seen is that this is just a, a really collaborative and wonderful community and we're all, you know, really in this on the ground floor together. So thank, please, a huge round of applause to our I wish uh, we had more time together.